Hey everybody, welcome back. Steve Basic Architect here, Build Show Network. I even got sawdust on me, right? A legitimate day out at the job site. Anyways, what are we talking about today? One of my favorite topics, water management and rain screen. So one of the things about working with great builders like Green Logic Builders is that we do mock-ups, we talk through things, they come to the project with ears and eyes wide open, we discuss things, we figure out the best way that we want to do things, how we want to approach the project, what makes sense for that particular homeowner, that project, their budget, and then we come up with a solution, and then they do that exception, they, they, they carry out that solution exceptionally well. So today, we have a mock-up here. <coughs> you can see we have our zip system. We have our zip system is tape here in this case, and the tape is rolled. And then we have furring strips. Now, what the word furring strips do is they pad out the wall. Now, why do you want the wall padded out? Well, a little bit of water, a little bit of water poured in there. And you can see it drains right out. But the space isn't only about draining. It's about drying out. I pour this on, the wall gets wet, that wall has the ability to dry because not only is that space draining, but it's ventilating the wall. Let's go back to the studio, we'll break out some drawings, and we'll have at it. We'll talk about rain screens. I'll see you back there. Hey everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that out there. Green Logic's doing a great job. Um, they even built that little mock-up for me. but. Uh, it's uh, always interesting to me that people think green screens are all about draining. And uh, that's only half the story. So, pulled out one of the details. Of course, got our good friend Big Red here. And uh, we're going to talk about the other half of the story today. So, join in and uh, let's hit it. <laughs> all right, everybody. So, broke out the water table detail. You can see here, you give a little quick reference. Foundation wall. That mud sill detail that we talked about a couple weeks ago. And here, of course, this is our zip R9 sheathing. It sits on a little block. And then this is the rigid insulation behind it. In there. But most importantly, this is that rain screen gap. Then I poured the water down. And you can see here, it's three quarters of an inch. Now, you've heard me say down and out, drain it out, all that good stuff. And, uh, you know, when it rains, have a rain event, and water does get in there, it'll have the ability to drain out at three quarters it'll have the ability to drain out there's materials out there that are you know kind of fabric style uh, building papers and they have little dimples on them and those little dimples are more than enough to drain water down those spaces but what you don't get with those types of rain screens even though they are drying is you are draining you don't get the drying right you get draining and down and out does apply because water kills all those good things but we don't get drying so the beauty of that three quarters of an inch is not only does it effectively drain, but we have a screen material here, vented screen, and that screening material allows air to get into that backside vent. And a couple things. One, allowing air in there somewhat equalizes the pressure, but creates the pressure drop enough that any water that does make its way in there 
has the freedom to drop and not jump across. Plus, the three quarters of an inch helps in any water not bridging the gap. Typically, the uh, dimension for a suspended water droplet is three eighths of an inch. So, three eighths of an inch or greater, then water is going to be forced to fall, not bridge. When you are less than three eighths, you have the ability to have a space where a water droplet can suspend and potentially come down and jump over and get on the other side. But the three quarters of an inch keeps everything pretty much on this side of the rain screen. But, I mean, at three quarters of an inch, if it comes down this face, that's my weather resistive barrier anyways. So it doesn't much matter. It's going to drain out. But what the three eighths and less doesn't give you is drying capacity. Now, I'm sure there's some people out there that will argue, oh, well, it, it does offer some drying, and it does, but there's no way it offers as much drying as our three quarter inch space. So having that vented space and then having a relief at the top of the wall allows you to induce some backside ventilation there. Now, the beauty of that backside ventilation, if we made that a little larger, you'd have your siding and then the furring strip. Right. Well, two things are happening there. By having this drying space or this ventilation space that runs up, my WRB has the ability to dry, but so doesn't the backside of my siding. So basically, I'm venting both sides of that vent space, that three-quarter inch vent space, by providing it, the backside of the siding gets to dry out, and the front side of my WRB, whatever I choose to have it as, gets the ability to dry out. Depending on how permeable the wall is, then you can also assist in starting to dry out some of the cavity if that is more permeable than other assemblies. So anyways, that's the other half of vented rain screens that people fail to talk about. And there are some people out there that I respect very, very much and that have talked about, you know, the drying capacity of that space is probably equal to or potentially even more important than the draining capacity of that space. So I'll leave you with that thought. But the idea is keep it greater than three inch, three eighths of an inch. We shoot for three quarters usually. And uh, not only are we draining, but we're drying. One and two. You get the best of both worlds. Three quarters of an inch. Vented rain screen. All right. So that's the detail. That's the video. That's everything. So. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed that, uh, understanding that there's more to rain screens than just draining a little bit of water. So anyways, if you're looking for more, Steve Basic Architect on Instagram, put up this kind of stuff all the time and talk and walk through it. Um, and if you're looking for even more, well, you got all my good friends on the Build Show, literally thousands of videos are up and uh, you can check them all out. You could be there all weekend even though it's a three-day weekend you could binge watch build show videos every minute this weekend and probably still not get through them all but uh it's all great information so go check it out lastly unbuild it podcast it's on the unbuild it show and uh you can find that on all the audio channels you can find it on youtube but we're out there me peter yost and jake bruton and uh we're recording our podcasts for uh, every other week. We got a bunch of good information out there. So go check it out. And uh, yeah, until next time.
think that's about it. Have a great weekend. Long live our buildings.